Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is my shelf that I wanted to show you, but it does need a little bit of organization before I uh, before I go into depth of any of the things on here. I really need some more shelf space in here. That's uh, something I've, I'm working on. So since I don't have enough shelf space, I have some of the books in this box here that I've been meaning to take out for a while. This was at my parents' house for years and I've just taken it back. So I have to get a new shelf to put these on. Okay, now that I've got it out here in the sunlight, let's take a look inside here on an old calendar. And <clears throat> there's a bunch of books inside of here that I haven't looked at in years. Closely, this is one I'm kind of excited to find. The uh, Illustrated Motor Cars of the World. So this is another ver another type of car encyclopedia that I have. I have had this book in my collection since I think I was maybe 19 or so when I found this in a bookstore, a college bookstore in Buffalo. I'm from near Buffalo, and um, there was this bookstore that... I went to a few times and I think I wasn't looking for car books. I think I just sort of found this on a shelf and pulled it off the shelf and it was nine fifty. Can't argue with that. So yeah, let's take a look at that. So illustrated motor cars of the world. This is one of the most unique car books I own and it is from 1770 to the present day. It's 932 models exactly like it says, and they look just like that on the front cover. What makes it so unique is that this is a book of artwork, but I looked just before doing this video, and I can't find any, any place in here where they were actually credited. So I don't know how this came about, like if it was a bunch of artwork that was commissioned or what. So here's our introduction, which is just like a general narrative history of the car. Just history, general history. And of course, it's not going to go any further than 1970, since that's when the book's uh, made. So Italian, Cars Behind the Iron Curtain, which is, of course, still very much intact. And here we are. Here's where we begin. So the Cugno steam carriage. Um, you don't really see it anywhere but in encyclopedias. And ancient cars of the late 19th century it started out in France. There's two different artists. There's this artist's signature with the kind of, he has the kind of uh, curly Q on his name. And then the other who, artist whose name, he's, it's, it almost looks like a stamp, that is, is a seahorse. When you get, when you get later into the book, here's some interesting ones. So Wanderer, Oh, you've seen with those encyclopedias that I have, not everything is illustrated, not every car. And so you may have never seen a Steyr before or a Wanderer, and that's what made it valuable. And I do love how each and every picture is like this kind of watercolor painting. This book was printed twice, as far as I can tell, and was never made again. So it's a unique thing that if you can find one, and they're not real expensive because they were quite a lot of them around, but here's Hansa. So Hansa is Germany, now 1936, around the time that they were owned by Borgward and Tecklenborg. So this is Borgward before he had his name on his cars. Opel, Pontiac, Chevrolet, Lancia, the Bugatti Type 57, of course. DKW, Meester Klaas, um, possibly called the F seven or the f6 version dkw fabric covered plywood doors and body side panels it's really neat so it's like a low cost small car from the time two cylinder two stroke 684 cc so 76 by 76 to get that 55 miles per hour meanwhile the hork owned by auto union is a five liter <laughs> five liter kind of uh, luxury car and uh, Morgan here, and Volkswagen, when it was still called the Kaffer, 
11A is what they're saying. That's the model name for the Volkswagen. And let's come to something really interesting. I like, here's a good one, Isata or Isata Frascini, Italy, designed by Fabio Luigi Rapi, the 8C Monterosa. This is uh, a car I kind of really like a lot, but I, I don't know how many of were made, maybe half a dozen, very few, and only for auto shows, and I think that would be the last year for them. Okay, so here's another interesting make, maybe. U-Court from Spain, 1951, U-Court 51, three-cylinder, two-stroke, DKW, basically, 1,034 cc, because it's a three-cylinder. So it's like a native Spanish car, rounds the picture. The Hotchkiss Gregoire, 2.2 liter, with a horizontally opposed air-cooled engine. And Bugatti 101. So this is the last Bugatti sports car before they went out of, basically out of business. And then there were some designs. I think Virgil Exner, my guy that did that DeSoto that I have, uh, may have tried one. And none went into production until the 90s. So this is the end of the road for Bugatti in post-war era. There's our Renault Forgot again. I think one of those in my Cars of the 50s and 60s video. Oh, this is a really good page. So the Gaz Pobieda, which means victory, from the USSR Gaz M20 right here. And then this would later go over to Poland and be made there in Warsaw and Panardina, which I very much love. The IFA, this is pretty obviously a DKW F9, but it's on the other side of the inner German border, and they couldn't call it DKW. They couldn't revive DKW. It was a public proprietary, so it was a manufacturer set up called IFA in East Germany. And Borgward Hansa, so Borgward does have his name on the luxury car now, post-war. And that's that one. Really neat. Okay. Picasso. Yeah, this is really pretty cool. Kind of skipping ahead here. I'm just looking at all kinds of pictures. So Denzel, that's just a really nice painting. So is this, this Tatra 603. An open car multipla. Standard Sportsman, this one's called. 1957. The Berkeley is here. We've seen this before. Two-stroke tw twin 322cc. And the you could still get to 65. That's pretty good for an engine that small. DKW, the Goggle Mobile T400. And I do a little feature on Glas cars in the New Year's video, 1967. So we'll go take a look at that. And I did in the last video on Mako, actually, <laughs> 1958. This is their 500 sports car, which is really beautiful. But it has a really terrible engine. This 450 cc two stroke isn't very good but hey they were there they went probably went out of business soon after and they just went back to making motorcycles moretti another car in siata that i've not i had never seen before when i before getting this book and yeah now almost all the drawings are the artist that has the seahorse symbol and he doesn't really do backgrounds he seems to do kind of like a gradient in the background which is what i would do honestly i don't think i could draw or paint uh, 400 some cars with backgrounds for all of them that would just take a lifetime sirena from poland i have some models of these i love the sirena buick uh this is i don't think this is production i think this is a concept car the Edsel, oh boy. George Walker, it even says body design, George Walker. Well, that part I didn't really know about, but that's the infamous failure there. And then DeSoto Fireflight. Ascourt, another Australian, interesting Australian car. And this one has a Volkswagen 1300 engine. So that's like a, a rebodied or special bodied v, uh, VW or Beetle. Last of the Packards right here. So, yeah, there's our Trabi again in Gagomobile 
scaling up to 700cc mini cars. Uh, Lloyd, who have a special bodied Alexander. Ah, Graciela. So they try to represent every country. And we have, you know, Russian Zill limousine. We have all kinds of American cars. And we have an Argentinian car, the Graciela coach. And that has a three cylinder, two stroke engine from Wartburg. So it has the, the, the Argentinians uh, kind of have a close relationship with Germany. So, well, with the East Germans in this case, and this would be like a kind of like a Peronist people's car, maybe. I don't know how long it lasted, probably not very long. Now we're in the 1960s. So really pretty Ford Taunus 17M. This is actually a really nicely styled car, but I don't know anything about German Fords. But I do know Goliath from Germany. This is one of Borgward's creations, and it's last of the Goliaths. This is 1961, the year that Borgward went under, and the Isabella right here. Here's some K cars from Japan, a Mazda 360. I have a model of this. The Mitsubishi 500 coach, the very first Mitsubishi car. Mitsubishi is, is a Zaibatsu, so they, they're a manufacturer in heavy industry in Japan that have been around for a long time. And Nissan Cedric, doing a little bit of kind of American style, but actually really nice. I like that. And Toyo Pet Publica, their first attempt at a kind of car of the people, maybe. This is an oddball steer. I don't even know how to say that. I don't want to try. Uh, <laughs> Adria. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen it anywhere else but in this book, so maybe that's some kind of a concept car, although it doesn't look all that inspiring for a concept car. Um, the Arista, though, I love that. And you can tell when you look at the wheels, it's based on our lovely Dyna Panard 24 CT, one of my favorite cars ever. 90 miles per hour, you have front-wheel drive. And then Studebaker, last of the Studebakers, South Bend engine plant taken over by Chrysler. Studebaker's only car plant is Canada, so it's saying Canada here. Yeah, for a few more years, and then they go out of business. Also soon to disappear, DKW, last of the DKWs. In this car with just changed square headlights and a four-cylinder, like a four-stroke engine in place of the three-cylinder two-stroke would be renamed the Audi in 1965. So, yeah, that's a good one. Last of the DKWs. Trabant 601 in 1965. Glas 1700, which we've seen before together. 1965 year of introduction. And it's a four-cylinder, 1.7. That's why it's called the 1700. V8 sports model available. Like I had mentioned before that the Glas spent a lot of money making these kind of luxury cars and that, that didn't work out for them they're too small of a manufacturer to be able to try and go butt heads with bmw uh, there's matra and ford renault r16 another car we see a lot of from this era spain so spain has the seat seat 850. i always say seat when i see that <laughs> okay monteverdi supercar 7.2 liter. Yeah, that's something else. Hmm. So we're at 1969 now. And then getting into 1970, you recognize this picture from the front cover. And I think this is almost the last page, or it is the last page. Yeah, 1970 is the end with the Auto Bianchi A112 and uh, Ford Tur Okay. <laughs> The very last page, they screwed up. Um, this is a Chevrolet Monte Carlo, and this car is a Ford Torino. That's, they they flip-flopped them by mistake, clearly. <laughs> okay. That's that little book. I thought that would just be interesting to share and hope that you enjoyed it. And hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.